I think we can actually make a start. I've seen that um, a lot of people have uh, just joined. So um, welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Um, we're all very excited to have you here. Uh, we will be discussing the very interesting but also very crucial topic of supplier assessment and monitoring uh, within the food and beverage industry. So, of course, it is imperative for food and beverage companies uh, to have a very good understanding of their own internal processes, of course, but also those of their suppliers. Uh, and this basically involves mapping out the entire supply chain uh, from raw materials uh, to final product delivery. By doing so, companies can actually identify potential risk at each stage and ensure that every link uh, in that chain meets their food safety standards. It basically allows them to have a, a holistic view of what is going on and to maintain the integrity and the quality of their products. Now, as we all know, food recalls can be uh, devastating, uh, not only from a financial perspective, but also in terms of brand reputation and consumer trust, which are all very, very important. So continuous monitoring of the supplier's safety performance helps in early detection of any deviations from your set standards. Uh, so practices like uh, regular auditing, uh, data collection and monitoring, performance reviews, they are all very essential in order to allow companies to intervene before issues actually escalate and materialize into recalls or even into outbreaks. And by staying proactive, companies can actually significantly reduce the risk of recalls and ensure ultimately consumer safety. Uh, of course, in today's market, as we all know, food and beverage companies often work with a diverse array of suppliers that are spread across different geographies. And often each supplier will provide them with different ingredients and each ingredient will have its own set of compliance requirements and its own safety standards. So uh, managing these uh, varied sources can be extremely difficult and extremely complex, especially though if these processes and if these workflows are not digitized. So um, of course, manual tracking uh, and maybe outdated systems uh, can lead to errors, delays, lack of visibility, uh, and it makes it quite difficult to, to maintain consistently uh, quality and safety standards. Of course, to address such challenges, we see more and more companies that are increasingly turning to advanced technologies and digital solutions where utilize such technologies, such as Fudakai, that utilizes AI. Uh, these tools uh, allow for real-time tracking and a comprehensive assessment of suppliers based on their historical data and performance, uh, based on their geographic locations, uh, the ingredients that the company is sourcing from them. And by making sense and by making use of these data analytics and of course, uh, artificial intelligence, companies can gain deeper insights into their supply chain and ensure not only transparency, but also accountability at every step. So throughout today's webinar, we will dive deeper into all of these aspects uh, and explore best practices, but also we will share with you some um, approaches in order to enhance uh, supplier assessment and monitoring. So uh, we would like to thank you all for being here today and we're looking forward to an interesting and insightful session. So let's hear it from uh, our expert speakers uh, for today. We have the privilege to have here with us uh, Viswanath Nadakalasi. He is the Global Food Safety and Quality Systems Manager at Griffith Foods. So this over to you, a brief intro about what who you, who you are and your role. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Vishwanath Nadakalasi. You can call me just as Vish. So I'm a global food safety and quality systems manager working in uh, Griffith Foods Worldwide Inc. So uh, I take care of you know, all the related 
uh, activities within you know, global and overseeing the regional units as well. Thank you, Cressy. Thank you, Viz. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you. Uh, and we have our very own Zaharula Fedorakopoulos is our Food Safety Data Curation Manager at Agrono. Zaharula. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you, Chrissy, for introducing me. I'm Zaharula, uh, the Food Safety Data Curation Manager at Agrono. I have some background in food science and as well in data management. So I have been involved in uh, the building of uh, AI-powered modules in food account. So I'm excited to show you the use cases of supplier assessment today. Thank you, Zaharula. And as for me, my name is Chris Rudogiani. I work in the business development team for Agrono. My background is as well in, in food safety. I've worked in both the UK and Germany in various companies in various food safety related roles. And I'll be facilitating this session uh, today. So it's uh, a pleasure actually. So let's discuss uh, the focus of today's webinar. I briefly touched on that in the first slide, uh, but uh, I'll just talk you through the agenda basically. First, we will discuss uh, the importance of successful supplier assessment and monitoring and why actually this is essential uh, to maintain high product standards and to ultimately protect your brand. Uh, we will also cover um, some best practices for supplier assessment to ensure that you're not only evaluating, but also you're collaborating with your suppliers. Uh, we will also explore how you can make use and sense of AI and new technologies to avoid recalls, uh, highlighting the role of advanced tech. Uh, and then finally, we will look at some uh, practical use cases of technology and supplier evaluation workflows and showcase to you via uh, real world scenarios how these technologies can actually enhance and help with your workflows. So in this section, we will discuss uh, the importance of supplier assessment and monitoring and uh, what we mean by that. So it is of course extremely essential for companies to stay compliant with food safety regulations. Uh, so for example, in the United States, companies must adhere to the Food Safety Modernization Act, the FSMA. In Europe, for example, companies must comply with the European Food Law Regulation. And these regulations are well, well, very well thought of and are basically designed to ensure that uh, the safety and quality of food products from farm to fork, basically. But it is important to note that it is not just about the company itself adhering to these standards it is actually their responsibility to ensure that their suppliers are also compliant. And this means conducting uh, thorough assessments to verify that their suppliers meet the required uh, food safety standards and of course, continuously monitor them to ensure ongoing compliance. Uh, secondly, it is of course part of their due diligence to continually monitoring their suppliers' performance. And of course, this involves more than just an initial assessment of their suppliers. It requires ongoing um, vigilance in order to ensure that suppliers actually continue to meet consistently uh, the product, the ingredient specifications, and they achieve satisfactory outcomes in their internal audits. So by regularly monitoring supplier performance, companies can actually detect deviations earlier and ensure that their products ultimately remain safe. We also think that uh, continuous supplier assessment should be incorporated in any food and beverage company's HACCP plan. We all know what HACCP is. It is basically this systematic approach to identify, evaluate, and also control food safety hazards. And by incorporating the supplier assessment onto your HACCP plan, it's not just another uh, traceability layer. It is more than that. It actually ensures that every step of your supply chain adheres to food quality and safety standards. Finally, it's all about the brand's reputation. And as we all know, a brand's reputation is actually built on the trust consumers have in that. Uh, so regular and proactive monitoring of your suppliers helps to ensure that all the ingredients that are used are of high quality and are safe, of course, for consumption. 
So ultimately, effective supplier monitoring can demonstrate a company's commitment to quality and safety. And of course, that fosters into consumer trust and also loyalty. Moving on, we will uh, look at some best practices to help you enhance your supplier assessment. So I will share some of our thoughts and then I'm gonna let this uh, share his own thoughts as well. So for us, uh, we suggest that you incorporate a multi-criteria evaluation for your suppliers. And having this approach um, by incorporating various parameters in the risk assessment, um, such as the supplier's food safety history, their regulatory compliance, and of course, quality metrics is extremely important, but uh, it shouldn't stop there and it doesn't stop there. It is extremely important to consider also sustainability practices. So we've seen a lot in today's market uh, that both consumers, but also regulators are increasingly focused on sustainability. So it is very important to evaluate suppliers also on their environmental and social practices. It's a way that you can actually future proof your supply chain against not only evolving regulations, but also evolving expectations, uh, consumer expectations, of course. Then, of course, it is extremely important to define the correct key performance indicators. KPIs, as we all know, provide a measurable way to understand how your suppliers rank in terms of risk. And these indicators might be anything that makes sense to a company. It can be the level of responsiveness of a supplier. It can be their compliance with the safety standards, their delivery times, their, def their defect rates, the number of recalls that they had historically. But Ultimately, by clearly defining and tracking those KPIs, you can gain a very comprehensive understanding of your supplier's performance and identify any areas of improvement. And it actually helps in making informed decisions that are based on actual data. Now let's talk about the role of auditing. Uh, of course, as we all know, auditing is fundamental in the supplier assessment uh, scope. So. We think that it is beneficial to use a mixture of surprise and scheduled audits. Uh, scheduled audits, of course, will allow your suppliers to prepare and to ensure that all documentations and all practices, everything is up to date for the day of the audit. However, on the other hand, surprise audits can provide a more realistic picture of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and compliance of your suppliers. And this combination can help you gain a more accurate and more comprehensive understanding of your supplier's adherence to the standards that you have set. Finally, uh, we definitely suggest making use of tech solutions to track and analyze supplier performance. Uh, we think that this is increasingly important. Uh, Technologies such as AI uh, can provide real-time data and insights into your supply chain. AI can actually forecast, or if you'd like, predict potential risks by analyzing patterns in the supplier's performance data and historical data. Um, of course, this can ultimately enhance the efficiency of the supplier assessment process and improve not only accuracy, but also the reliability. Uh, so I'm going to um, let Vis now share his thoughts on that. So Vis, over to you. Thank you, Chrissy. Okay. Um, some of the Griffith best practices, practices I'm going to share here, and uh, with a mission like farm to fork risk assessment, wide over the you know all <clears throat> value chain. So it's very important that we have to have a clear picture of risk assessment programs spanning around ingredients as well as supplier and followed by a risk mitigation process. So in the Griffith, like as a company, we are dealing with very complex number of formulations. As a result, we are dealing with very complex number of ingredients as well. So being that said, so it is very imperative that we have to have raw material categorization. So 
while doing this categorization, it is very important that how closely linked group of ingredients are categorized based on risk associated and mainly these kind of like food akai and any other, you know, EA tools can help doing that parameter categorization. And with that categorization, so we'll be creating a global risk information or library of the information for all these ingredient categories. And that will going to provide you kind of a like, you know, insights, so the severity of the issues, the frequency of the issues occurring. And with that, so we'll be doing the risk analysis. So as a result of that, without considering any control measures like without considering country of origin or suppliers. So we will divide all the raw materials or ingredients. Okay. Get, you know, you will have visibility as high, medium or low risk ingredients based on the nature, based on the associated risk, all those kind of things from the past history. And second thing, after doing this exercise, we will go to club the suppliers we are dealing with in respect of those ingredients. And then we will try to collect the information as much as possible for the forming level assessment and also for the post-harvest activities they'll be carrying out. And then there'll be like transportation, intermediary storage, all those kind of things, and then follow to the primary processing. So in some of the products, it may end up with you know very simple process, but in some of the ingredients, it may take additional processing. And a primary processing happens in one country and secondary processing happens in another country. So it is very important to know your value chain. So what kind of risk are associated at farm level or post-harvest activities, transportation or during storage or the primary processing, all those things. So given that situation, all the suppliers you are dealing with, so you need to do in connection with the raw material risk, and you will have to arrive at whether these suppliers are high risk or medium risk or low risk, meaning, so you will have to look into their portfolios, like control measures they, are, they have adopted. The control measures may be at farm level, like adopting good agriculture practices or Rainforest Alliance, or any other certification, sustainability certification, which will take care of food safety and quality as well. So same is the case cascaded down, down the line, like, you know, post-harvest and then transportation or storage or in the primary process. Also looking into the certification program like GFSS scheme or any HACCP or ISO 22000 or any other kind of certification program and the has a program and other control measures you know imbibed are implemented at supplier level taking all those into account we'll have to do the supplier risk analysis in respect of the particular raw material categories or individual ingredient and then arriving at whether these are high medium or low and the next process will be like identifying the mitigation processes based on the level of risk for ingredient and the level of risk for supplier. So now the first two things will going to determine whether you are going to have supplier audit or you're going to rely on your GFSS scheme or just is it okay has a certification or ISO 22000 or what. And also it will going to determine on the ingredient level what level of specification you need to have. So based on the risk associated, you will have to develop the detailed specification or simple specification is enough based on your requirement. So that will going to be determined here. And further, once you have approved suppliers and the supplies are you know, procured, you'll have to have continued supplier performance it's not that you have approved the supplier based on the risk assessment. You'll have to perform the, you know, perf uh, I mean, you have to monitor the supplier performance on an, on an ongoing basis with a set of criterias. 
like number of deviations, adherence to your regulatory compliance, adherence to food safety, you know, uh, on-time delivery, and many other things. So this will going to determine the set of KPI, what you are going to determine, and then you'll going to arrive at, you know, what level of ongoing performance you have, and also you're going to determine the delisting criteria in the case they are not performing, so you'll go to delist them. So finally, having these strategic processes and you're going to ensure low risk supply. In addition to this, you may have to attribute some, you know, corrections if there are kind of issues here and there if the supplier is not able to take care of. Okay, this is all in overall. So we'll discuss more on this in the coming slides. Thank you, Chrissy. Over to you. Thank you so much, Viz, for your thoughts here and for sharing um, so interesting insights uh, of your best practices. Now, moving on, um, I will let uh, Zaharula present to you some supplier assessment and evaluation use cases and how uh, Fudakai can actually be used in order to gain valuable insights uh, and help with your decision making. So, Zaharula, over to you. Thank you very much, Lucy. So let's start with the first use case, which is the about the importance of monitoring supplier performance as a critical step towards successful supplier risk assessment. We all know that uh, it is absolutely crucial for a food and beverage manager to stay on top of any uh, food safety incidents that might uh, help uh, impact their supply chain. This is why we have created the customizable scanning dashboard, a powerful feature collecting and analyzing the latest food safety data announced around the world. Food and safety professionals can tailor the dashboard to their unique supplier network. And once you have set this up, you will be able to monitor the latest food safety incidents involving one of your vendors in real time, as shown in this uh, first table. You will also receive an email alert the moment the National Food Safety Authority uh, announces a new incident. Of course, monitoring will effectively help you maintain your hazard plan. It's also about having detailed records as part of your traceability routine. This is key to maintaining your company's readiness for unexpected recalls or FDA inspections. Efficiently based traceability uh, system facilitate effective recall management, and they allow identification, uh, product identification and supply chain tracking. Our Fudakai platform captures a wealth of information from the initial authority announcements, including product brand, lot or, or barcode numbers, root cause details, uh, analytical results. This knowledge is pure gold for a uh, food and beverage manager, empowering them to take swift uh, targeted corrective actions when an alert hits. So to assess your suppliers holistically, you need to look at their full uh, food safety performance too. That's why that's where the supplier check mechanism comes in, which gives you access to the full historical incident record for your suppliers. This data is invaluable for enhancing your supplier documentation and ensuring your partners continuously meet quality and safety standards. So in summary of our first use case, by leveraging the power of real-time monitoring, traceability, and supplier performance history, you can take your supplier risk assessment to the next level. I, we think that it, it is a game changer for food and beverage managers, which are serious uh, about safeguarding their supply chain and of course their brand reputation. And now I would like to hear from these, what are your perspectives on this? On this? Thank you, Harala. Uh, this is really you know, very important, as Harala said. So it's very uh, imperative that we have to continually monitor supplier performances, maybe directly or indirectly. So it's not that we have approved supplier and it's not that you know, everything will be going right. So once we have the approved supplier onboarded, and they start supplying the material, there could be a lot of variables at supplier end, maybe, you know, like employees change, or system change, or many other things, okay? Their supply chain, procurement patterns, many other things. 
So it is very, very important, imperative that we have to keep continually monitoring the supplier performance. So having these kind of you know, AI tools, really it will help us with daily alerts or periodic alerts or information. You may not be experiencing some you know, issues with your product, but then other products which they are manufacturing or similar kind of a product they are supplying to other customers, there could be some issues have encountered. So having this kind of monitoring, it gives you kind of a, you know, information that whether your supplier is really performing well or not. So also if there are kind of issues encountered, you'll be able to see what level of uh, you know, severity is this, the recall classes, if there are kind of a product, you know, recall, or some issues have been identified at the border or customer or whatever. So what level of severity it has got? Recall one or recall two, what kind of? So it gives you opportunity to think, is it going to impact you in any way? Is it is the particular case indirectly or directly going to impact your supplies as well? So this is the time for introspection as well. So it make you think whether you need to reach out to your supplier, hey guys, so we saw some issues on these kind of things. Is everything okay? Is it going to impact our supplies or those kind of things? So given these situations, having the information also provide you opportunity to think whether you need to review your HACCP plan, whether you need to update your specification to have better control on at supplier end. Also, you can think on like, do you need to improve the sampling and testing plan? So maybe everything like supplier approval by an you know, audit or other processes is based on sampling process. It may not cover everything. So we need to be sure that having continuous monitoring, this will provide opportunity wherever, you know, whether it is specification update or sampling and testing plan, or in the case it is kind of a very serious issue, it might have affected, you may need to take call to, you know, delist them, okay? So it is, it's a situation that it may impact in the future and you are forcing the risk and it may warrant or demand for on-site visit and go through additional review process for the particular suppliers. At the same time, so I have a doubt or I'm not sure that though these artificial intelligence tools will going to you know, collect you know, more of the information mainly from the regulatory bodies or government or legislation bodies, but how about the issues which are occurring internally, which are not reported actually. So we'll not be knowing. So that is something we will have to have mechanism how we can get to know. That's only through, I would say that your periodic visit or in our review process, all those kind of things. Arla, over to you. Thank you, Grace. Uh, as always, your uh, perspective on everything is very interesting. So that's very useful. Uh, now, please allow me to move on to the second use case of today, uh, which is about the evaluation and assessment of new suppliers using evidence from food safety history performance, risk scoring, and compliance with uh, regulatory requirements. So, um, when you have to introduce a new supplier, it is impor important to have a comprehensive knowledge of their food safety history, assessing an overall risk performance performance while not being sure you have access um, to real-time real -time data can be challenging. Uh, in FUDECA, we have a supply profile, which includes all food safety history records, including number of recalls, border rejections, inspections, warning letters. Estimated risk scorings for the country of operation and the source ingredients that you are considering are, are also available. So by analyzing this data, you can learn important details about the supplier's dedication to food safety and their ability to provide safe products. The warning signs might include having a supplier having problems recurring regularly, for example, every few months, which may suggest systemic issues that need to be addressed. 
On the other side, isolated incidents can be less concerning. Also, high-risk scoring for sourcing ingredients are also, are also potentially concerned. Of course, it is essential to review a supplier's compliance with regulatory standards as well. Keeping track of how regularly the FDA has inspected them and what were the inspection outcomes can help the decision maker to oversee regulatory violation. Multiple warning letters can notably impact your supplier evaluation as well. Before engaging with a new supplier, you should examine their capacity to uphold compliance and confirm that they have taken the, the correct sufficient uh, actions. However, it is critical to keep an eye on every supplier's performance and track both positive and negative trends, where you can identify areas of improvement or potential risks uh, that uh, will arise. And this is why the inspections with no uh, indicated outcomes and their distribution over time are listed here as well. So with this use case, we want to highlight that uh, using a data-driven approach can enable a more informed supplier selection and decision management. And now let's hear from Wiz. Uh, which points do you think are most important in this use case? Well, I agree with you know, with totally. The important thing, I mean, a very interesting thing is like, you know, seeing kind of a uh, uh, information availability for the suppliers, okay? So uh, in Griffith, I, I, as I said, as we are handling very complex number of ingredients and we have more than 3000 suppliers. So it's, it's not easy to manage on a day-to-day -day -to -day basis when you're having, when you're onboarding suppliers and, and also there'll be so many delisted in a delisting criteria as well. And there'll be many suppliers going out of the approved supplier list. And with that, and we will have to deal with, you know, alternate suppliers management and so all those kind of things. So it really makes, you know, very difficult to have a approval process, you know, uh, have a, a, a smoother when we considering all those kind of things, okay? So when we are selecting the supplier, we don't know where are the suppliers. So they may be based in any part of the world and you may want to get the particular ingredient any part of the world. So as Griffith is you know, operating worldwide, so we are dealing with suppliers almost all continents, almost all the countries. So many, so we are seeing all kinds of risk. We are dealing with all kinds of suppliers and in day to day, we'll have to approve many suppliers. So it's not easy to assess the supplier if you're not, you know, if, if you don't have information on them. So it is very imperative, very important to know some kind of a history on particular suppliers. Okay, maybe uh, the direct suppliers or the giant ventures or whoever. So you'll get to know some ideas when you are, you, when you want to do a new supplier approval process. So in this case, artificial intelligence tools definitely help if those are registered on particular suppliers, you will get to know what kind of issues were dealt with those particular, particular um, specific suppliers. Were these of food safety nature or just you know, regulatory non, non, or regulatory non compliance or what level of issues. So that is very, very important when we are trying to look for a new supplier. And also what kind of ingredient they are dealing with, okay? And so when we want to procure some ingredient from them, so I believe these artificial intelligence tools act as like kind of a library so that you can go and check do you have those suppliers registered over there for any kind of issues? So what kind of issues? So if there were issues in the past, were there any repetition? Is it a continued issue or how is that? So it is very important. So if there were issues registered in the, you know, like 10 years back, now you're not able to see means what is that changes happen. So basically you will going to, you know, decide 
and you'll go it will help you design the supplier approval program what kind of questions you need to ask to the supplier or supplier approval mechanism you need to decide it will help you on that and further importantly so as we know in the present when we are manufacturing the product it doesn't mean that it is consumed in the same country so today the ingredient from us the finished product from us it will go to one country from there that particular finished product it will go to another country so the customer requirement and the destination end user regulatory compliance requirement it varies so it is something very complex in the present and having all those requirement so it is very difficult sometimes to manage these suppliers also here these artificial intelligence tools if there are such issues happened in the past say example the material is supplied from you know africa region and supplied to us and what kind of compliance issues were there regulatory compliance issues example now the eto issues are popping up here and there so there are again regulatory we have inconsistencies from one country to another country so us fda allows 7 ppm but you apply you know you allow very limited but some countries zero tolerance so given these situations it is very important so what level of capability these suppliers may be having what kind of issues were there in the past if these were registered in these kind of artificial intelligence tools so it will give you opportunity to decide over do i need to go ahead with this supplier if i need to for some reason i don't have any other alternative so what level of preventive measures i need to take when we are going for that supplier and what level of specification we need to have you know whether it requires audit or what not okay also sometime having this ready information in the form of library i what i would say so sometime you will not be having sufficient time to approve the new suppliers and your customer is waiting for your finished product you may need to have you know exception approval management in that case so it 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 will act as a very good information tool ready information give you some idea oh this supplier is not that risky this supplier is could be trustworthy and of course you'll going to evaluate other you know information sources like certification program their grade level uh, all those kind of the report review all those kind of things so additionally this will help you make decision on that okay but at the same time there are some gaps uh leeways like you know if you know these complaints are not registered for particular supplier in this system okay so then you you should not rely only one system so then you may there are chances that you may go wrong also there are in the present we have seen country to country regulatory stringency okay strictness so some countries will be having very strict regulatory compliance monitoring at the border level or customs or whatever things in some countries so still we don't see that rigorous you know adherence to the regulatory aspects or monitoring program so having those kind of things here and there the issues might have not registered in these and that you may not be able to you know uh, account here and that you'll have to take care of while uh, going with these kind of tools thank you harla thank you very much vais uh, that was very informative and now our finally our third use case uh, which is on supplier assessment based on sourcing ingredient risk their geography uh, ingredients future risks and of course internal parameters so performing a thorough supplier risk assessment is crucial for identifying and mitigating potential risks in your supply chain uh, and this automated uh, supplier risk dashboard that you see on this slide calculates an overall risk estimate per supplier. Uh, it, consi it considers multiple factors such as incidence risks, recalls, uh, border rejections, or warning letters. 
This multi-factor formula is highly customizable to your own standards, ensuring that you can tailor the assessment to your specific needs. The inclusion of forecasted sourced ingredient rescoring scoring can help a food and beverage manager improve the resilience of their supply chain by identifying and mitigating potential risk before they become major issues. And the factor that makes this automated supply risk assessment very effective is the inclusion of your own company's internal, internal parameters, such as audit scorings or certifications in a secure way. By comparing your network of suppliers, you can prioritize where your efforts or your sample testing or auditing are needed most. That concludes the use cases of today, and I hope you have found them very uh, informative and helpful. And of course, finally, we will hear from this. Uh, what do you think are the best practices for performing a supplier risk assessment? Yeah, so once uh, you have the approved suppliers or new supplier approval, so uh, as I said previously, it's not that it's over, okay? So you will have to continuously monitor your incoming supplies. Also, you have to monitor your suppliers. And having these uh, systems, so uh, the good thing is that we can have kind of a forecasting, okay, prediction for next one year kind of a thing with the past histories of occurrence of issues. And also, to focus on some ongoing emerging risk. So it will help you decide. So frequently fine tune your supplier approval process. Frequently you may need to decide the performance monitoring criteria. How, how often you need to you know, monitor the suppliers for the incoming materials, all those kind of things. And very importantly here, once you have this Importantly, as I said, in Griffith, we have too many ingredients. It is very difficult to monitor or get the information you know, separately. So if you have a one source of information for all the ingredients applicable for you, it is very easy <clears throat> to do the risk assessment, to review the risk assessment, to also set up you know, proper preventive measures for that. So many a time, so the challenges like, you know, in the current company, if there are changes in the manpower, the particular employee who's handling this process, he left and it's gone, whatever the information with him. So if you are having such tools, it's not a big deal. So the moment you have a new employee onboarded, you can just tell them, okay, you utilize these tools and just monitor and review our program. It's, it'll be damn easy for that, okay, to review the process and having all the risk information available globally and also to look into, you know, country-wise if there are any risk. So just to give you an example, so we have seen uh, the issues with respect to dairy ingredient like, you know, listeria is being very repeatedly, very high number of issues registered for France. So this will take you to an you know, introspect, what is that causing? So if we are going to procure this material from France, so what are the risks? What are the alternatives? In the similar way for Griffith, we you know, procure a lot of herbs. So particular reason areas are attributed with certain kind of hazards. So when you get to know these kind of information, so it's not like single incidents will get you know, okay, this info, uh, this issue is going to occur from this. Giving example, you know, like alkaloids issue in herbs, it was majorly attributed to the Turkey or surrounding areas. So when I was visiting, when I visited suppliers in some African regions, they were quoting that if the suppliers are coming from like Turkey and other reasons, Albania reasons, so they have observed a lot of issues on alkalides. So such things you'll be able to notice and you'll be alerted, okay? So the very good thing is it will going to give you kind of a prediction or, or a risk forecasting that is really going to be helpful for your case or whenever you're doing the risk assessment or supplier risk assessment, even the, you know, to decide the risk mitigation processes.
the level of risk mitigation processes. Of course, these will help you determine if the, you know you need to do, do the like audit requirement and you know, what level of audit you need to do. Whether system audit is fine or process audit to be done or on-site audit or what kind of audit, surprise audit, what, right? Also, having these informations available in the portal, it will going to give you confidence, say, comparing with their certification. We have seen in the current, like many uh, suppliers, they'll be having double A grade in BRC or something like that. But when actually you look into it, it is not correlated. It's not truly, you know, uh, representing or they have such a, you know, say a robust system. So there could be many other reasons, okay? But then this will going to give you confidence, okay? Their certification program is robust and here also we are not observing a lot of issues, meaning their certification bodies are good, their audit patterns are good, so they are open enough, those kind of things, okay? Thank you. Thank you both very much, Zaharula, for talking us through these use cases. I hope everyone found this interesting and this for sharing your thoughts. As always, your viewpoint is actually educational for all of us here. So thank you very, very much for that. Um, so we have been running throughout the session uh, a poll for you to um, answer and you can actually start voting as well now. Um, the question here is which process you think it's most important when performing supplier risk assessment? Um, so I can see some of these um, answers now. You have a few more seconds to vote just to inform everyone here. So I can see most of you um, are voting for having an overview of the food safety history of your suppliers, but the votes uh, keep coming. So I, I guess we'll just give a few more seconds here. Great, so uh, most of you have responded that the most important aspect is to actually have an overview of your supplier's food safety history. And I can see that a lot of you have also responded that the most important thing is to actually go and monitor your supplier performance and number of incidents. Uh, so thank you all uh, very much uh, for that. Um, and with that in mind as well, uh, I would also like to ask you to uh, ask us any questions, ask questions for our experts, uh, to try their best to, to respond to you and answer your questions. Uh, and I will let actually Zaharula go through the questions and see which ones we can answer now. Thank you, Chrissy. So yeah, I have, I have been reading all of the uh, questions. Um, so there, there are some very interesting ones coming in. Thank you for sending them. Um, I'll start with this one, which says, what are some of the mechanisms of monitoring suppliers' performance? How can this be done, particularly where the hazard is being controlled by the supplier of your direct supplier? Uh, OK, uh, I would suggest that uh, this uh, is related to the third, third use case uh, of today. Uh, I would personally suggest that uh, one makes uh, use of public av available data announced around the world and using them combined with the internal available ones that you uh, have from your direct supplier. Uh, this can be your auditings, your um, uh, samplings, uh, sample testing, um, and then you can uh, perform an overall risk scoring, uh, and then you can calculate uh, and perform a supplier uh, risk assessment. I hope that uh, captures your question. And I'm afraid that we don't have much time to sit here on the questions, but please feel free to uh, send them. And if you have any other burning questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. 
And then we would like to also hear again from this. Uh, your, your opinion, this is very important to us. So we'd like to know what did you find most interesting or surprising about today's webinar? Or what do you think are the key takeaways that we must uh, take back? Yeah, as I said repetitively, so these artificial intelligence tools, it will really act as a library and directly these will help you for decision making, I would say. So unless and until logically you don't have sufficient information, uh, you know, as a quality person or food safety person, you will not be able to make a decision, right? So here, these platforms are really, really helping for decision making. Okay, what level of uh, supplier approval process we need to have. So what is the criteria we need to set if we have to delist the supplier and uh, all those kind of things and the raw material risk assessment, what are the parameters you need to include when you're doing the raw material risk assessment. And the same is the case is uh, for the supplier risk assessment, just how I said, form level or country of origin, all those kind of things and including the regulatory compliances, okay? And really it will go to help in reviewing your risk assessment program as well as has a plan maintenance. And very importantly, on an ingredient specific basis, you will it will help you decide what parameters should be included in specification and uh, mutually agree with the suppliers. And also what parameters on a routine basis you need, what parameters results you need periodic basis on annual basis whatever the things okay which parameters really you don't care so which based on your assessment it is not a problem okay and this will be a really fundamental and this will be a key information to decide sampling and testing plan as well so that on a frequent basis you will going to have right sampling and testing and verifying the, on the incoming supplies and that will be a you know basic for uh, that will be information for your supplier performance monitoring as well as incoming supply monitoring as a whole these artificial tools really really important when we are you know making decision and uh, to make decisions and really these information timely help you make you know, decision if there are any kind of unforeseen risk revolved around and you may be, you know, you may be encountering in the future. Okay. So overall, I tell you, so these technologies, so leverage technology, I would say, right? We have to go with the technology and take the advantage of those kind of things. Thank you, Harla. Thank you so much, Viz, um, for um, your thoughts here. Um, in order for us to do the wrap up, we have here the results from uh, a form that we shared with the people who registered uh, for this session today. Uh, and we can see that for all of you, it's very important to have access to updated insights on emerging risks for your supply chain and of course for your suppliers as well. Uh, and I think ultimately this is the question that we tried to answer through today's session and webinar. How can actually AI uh, and analytics around data help with that particular pressing challenge for all of you? Uh, and hopefully you found the use cases presented by Zaharula informative and of course this is insights I hope they have been helpful and uh, some of these ideas would have prompted you to actually enhance the workflows. Um, and for us, uh, I would like to say that if you found this interesting and you would like to get on a session with us to better understand uh, how um, your supply chain, um, the workflows around this can be optimized, feel free to just scan the code that you see on your screen here and we can uh, get on a call with you. So from my end, I would like to thank everyone uh, for joining this webinar today. And thanks a lot to our speakers. I'm gonna let you um, say your goodbyes and thank yous as well. So this over to you. 
it was a nice session, uh, Crazy. So I really emphasize that all the users can benefit out of this. So uh, uh, Agro know uh, food, okay, I really know very well and really it is benefiting. And of course, so I'm constantly in touch with these agrono team. So how best we can, you know, get the benefit of these, you know, for our risk assessment purpose. As I said, when you are operating with too many ingredients and a complex number, a complex supply chain. So when you are uh, really operating with different regulatory aspects or requirements, and this re tool really it will going to protect your brand reputation. You know, this is just like has a, how we are saying proactive approach. This is one of the thing acting as, you know, catalyzing the information for you on a daily basis or periodic basis. So it, it you know, cut down your burden collecting the information. So it's on a fingertip, you'll get the information. So for your, it will ease your risk assessment process and easily, and also I would say, if your management or purchasing team are not able to uh, really understand what you're seeing, these tools will really go into, uh, I would say the business analytics information will go into be a convincing factors for them. Overall, I tell you, this is a great tool. So I think one should make use of. So such tools, leveraging the technology in the food industries. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you so much, Viz. Uh, and Zaharula? Yeah. Thank you, Chrissy. I have really enjoyed it, enjoyed uh, participating in today's webinar. I hope you have found uh, at least uh, a bit of helpful, uh, the use cases. And of course, I'm happy to uh, discuss further if everyone, anyone wants to reach out. Uh, it's always a pleasure to hear from both you and uh, Vase because you are experts in this matter. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zaharula, and thank you everyone who attended from my end as well. It was very enjoyable. I found everything that you shared very insightful and informative. So it, it's always a pleasure to have these conversations. And it was also a pleasure to actually present to all these people that attended the webinar today. So thank you all very, very much. Um, I think we've come to an end for this webinar today. So thank you all. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, take care.